Hello everybody and welcome. My name is James with First Updates Now, checking in with Team 6002 Zoobotics from Kalamazoo, Michigan, here at the First in Michigan St. Joseph event. Here with me I got Akshay, Justin, and Lucas to talk more about this very mechanically inclined robot here. Great iterations here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. So, actually, do you want to tell me a little bit more about your robot? Give me a mechanical overview. Um, well, overall, it's... We went for a simpler design. It's just a nice, simple elevator, a, an elbow, and a wrist. This gives us a lot of different functionality. We can turn the intake to pick up from the ground or the single or the shelf substation. So we, we can, um, it gives us a lot of capability for that. Awesome, can you guys quick demonstrate that for us a second? Okay, so uh, in a second, the wrist is gonna be able to spin the intake and just so yeah, as you saw, the elbow goes like this, and then the wrist can completely rotate the intake, and it has this hard stop here to stabilize it as we're doing it. Can you talk a little bit more about the iteration? You call this uh, you call this your EveryBot Frankenstein. Can you talk yeah. about how that, so, uh, how that works? As at the start of the season, we decided to build the EveryBot because it seemed like a competitive uh, robot for us, and five out of the six members not ever doing FRC, we thought it would be a viable option for us. And uh, from there, we've taken this intake from the EveryBot robot, and uh, we've kind of changed it a little bit. We've added the mesh and the bungees for the cubes, and um, we just slapped that onto our wrist and, uh, and our elbow, and that connects to the elevator. So that's kind of how uh, the whole robot is able to function so smoothly. Awesome. This right here was, um, our previous arm design for the wrist. It was just two simple gears, and these parts are actually off of our FTC robot. Um, and as you can tell, it didn't really survive the uh, final iteration of our robot because uh, we thought it was kind of flimsy at first, so we decided to reinforce it with this dual arm and this four inch bearing for the uh, wrist. Awesome, great iteration. Justin, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the automation of your robot? Our robot is mostly controlled by motion profiles and PIDs using the uh, WPI Lib motion profiling and then with the Smart Motion, uh, RevSpark Max's Smart Motion in order to make the movements as smooth as possible, such as this one. Or even this one. So it can do a bunch of stuff really smoothly, very quickly, and then I don't have to worry about positioning it as much because it will automatically go to the correct position. As you can see, we have LEDs on the robot, and they change depending on what our mode is to give our human players uh, like show what we're picking up. So if we're picking up cones, it's yellow. If we're picking up cubes, it's purple. If it's sliding like that, that means we want to go to the back, the single substation. If it is solid, we want to pick it up off the ground. So as you can see, watch the intake. It will automatically stop once it goes in there because we check the current. So once the current override, or goes over a certain limit, it will automatically stop and pick itself up. Smart, great idea. Yep. Lucas, do you want to tell me a little bit more about your unique control system on this robot? Uh, yeah, so if you guys could come over here. So as you can see right now, we have a few different values. So you have this aligned position. We have an intake mode, so that's cones or cubes. So on the field, we have three three by three grids to, for dropping off. And we realized that on a numpad, you have the one through nine keys are in a grid-like shape. So 
we realized that if we wanted to quickly drop off for the operator and have it like intuitive, you could just press a button and it will set your drop level to one. So if you press here, one, two is, uh, if you press here, it's second level and here it's third level. And you can see it'll automatically set your intake mode too. So if I press the bottom, it sets it to cubes because we only place cubes on the bottom level. Um, and then you can see if I press on the side here, so either here or here, or here or here, it will set it to uh, cones because that's like the cone space on the grid. And then the middle two are for cubes. And you can see if I press the top one, it's three, middle one, it's two. And then if I press on the left, it actually says right because when you're dropping off, the robot's facing towards you, so it's reversed. So it makes it easier for the driver. Um, and when we were trying to set this up, we, we noticed that the driver station does not detect numpads. So if we go to our joysticks here, you can see it only sees the uh, game pads. Nothing about a numpad. So we had to find a program to emulate controllers. And we looked on Chief Delphi, and we found something called VJoy, which was close, but not quite what we wanted. But then we also saw in the same message something about virtual controller and VBox. So we set those up, and now when you press certain buttons on the numpad, that, can, that app will detect that and then press the corresponding buttons on the virtual controller. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today, 6002. Best of luck to you at St. Joseph and the rest of your season. Thanks for watching fun and have a great rest of your day. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.